sun warms this earth, gives us life, uh, makes everything, the season, you know, what it is. And the moon, of course, gets its reflection from the sun. And that's how the moon shines. And it don't shine on its own. It shines from the reflection in nature from the sun. And so then it reflects and comes to us in the nighttime as we see it here. So if you look and see that the sun, uh, so when you have the great earthquake, so when you see a shaking up of things, and you know sometimes uh, you see a shaking that people, uh, they're scattered. Um, for instance, look at what happened uh, over in Turkey and Syria recently. They, people were, they, they, now they're, I guess become as like refuge, uh, refugees, you know. They are, their homes are lost, their businesses are lost, the whole buildings fail, apartments, everything. And so many, like 40 some thousand people died in the earthquake and, and so on like that. And probably some will continue to die from it because of dust and all this kind of stuff that happens with it, chemicals and so on. But anyway, as of, of those, and so it gets spread out and people move. Away. And so you can see the sun, because of this uh, things that has taken place, the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. When, you know, in other places in Joel and other places, you know, and it talks about uh, the sun has withdrawn its shining and, and all these things. And when, you know, and this, this is one that I can remember when I was young that people used to talk about the sun will turn as black as sackcloth and the, and the moon will turn as blood. And it was things that would, you know, the way they'd talk about it would scare you to death, and rightly so. But those things, they were talking of natural. And they compared what this here with the natural, that it was actually going to take place. And so, but it says as sackcloth of her and the moon became as blood. So you, you can look and see then in the spiritual sense if our leaders that's supposed to be in tune with God and they're getting their son, their power, what they're you know, what they're doing and we're to be the light of the world as Christ is the light of the world, but he said, I'm gonna leave you once I'm gone, now you're to be the light of the world. We know he's not talking about the sun, but yet, you know, it's natural uh, because he set all those natural things in order just as well as he has these spiritual things. So, but he also shows us those things that we can see to be able to see those things which cannot be seen. And so we, we can look and be able to understand that 
In other words, I'll say for myself, if I don't preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified, if I say, you know, some kind of other doctrine than that of Christ, then my understanding is darkened. Okay? My, my uh, power with God is weakened or gone. Okay? And when you get to talking that it's somebody else other than His Son, I believe you get into the dark side, if you want to put it that way. So you get into the darkness of things. And so then, just sit and think about it. If I uh, am to be a leader of, a, of churches, of people, of assemblies, whether I be an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher of the Word of God, no matter what it is, of gatherings of small or great, that that reflection then, if I'm a teacher, I'm, ex I'm kind of uh, gathered that we will all eventually come to the same knowledge. So then you will, in other words, if I say a particular doctrine, preach something, then more than likely that will be repeated. And that's the problem when, whether it be, uh, it, it's not a real problem if it be the truth, but it's a real problem if it be an untruth. If it, it is a seen right way. So then that moon become as blood. In other words, it becomes in guiltless because of the non-truth. And so then there is further reactions. Okay, let's look at the next verse. There's further reaction. And the stars of heaven, uh, you know, yeah, Peter said it like this, when the day star arrives in our hearts, and he's talking about Christ, you know, when we see Christ, and we view that star uh, the brightness in the, the, the heavens of the firmament that he talks about. But we all are also of that of the heavenlies. In other words, you could go out, if it's probably too cloudy right now, but if you went out on a clear night, you could see the stars. So if you think of that in the spiritual, how people are looking at you, uh, you may be a bright one, you may, but you know, you may, one, you may not be as bright as the other one, but you're still a star, you know, but you may be, and I'm looking at it as in learning stage and growth stage and how the influence maybe that you have at that particular time in life and so on like that. And, and you know, some people will look and say, well, the leaders, they're a great big bright stars, but the one that's helping somebody in life is just as bright a star as the leader is because you sit and think about it. If the, you know, as Kathy's talking about the little lady she met, you just say, if somebody needs that help, that's a that that's a bright star, because we sometimes we kind of look upon the gift of helps as a lesser gift. There is a gift of helps. Mm -hmm. There's a gift of governments. There's a gift of, of tongues and uh, the interpretation. There's a gift of government and so on like that and there's also the gifts of help and you never hear that talked about preached about but what about those that help there are, you know and people and there's a tremendous amount of people that need help in things of life and, and you may never ever see them again but somewhere along the line because it's of truth because it's of God because it's of love then look how bright you're shining unto them so, all right, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So, if we go into uh, 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 I know it's in Matthew twenty-one, I believe. Yeah, I believe yeah, twenty-one. Sometimes it's a little different chapter. I don't see it. So twenty-one. Yeah, 21 and 18. Matthew 21 and 18. And there's one in Luke 2, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll go into Luke 13 just right after that. But Matthew 21 and 18. Now in the morning as he returned unto the city, he hungered. So when he's coming by, and all these stories that, and I know this kind of, I'm not going to get into it deep, but because I've taught them before and there's some lessons on that but about when Christ came to his disciples and stuff and asked them have you any meat you know he asked them that 
a couple, you know, some something. Have you any meat? What he's wanting to know, it's not that he was hungry. As a matter of fact, the Psalms, I believe, says that if my father were hungry, he would, you know, he, he, he don't have to ask you. So, you know, the thing about it of it is, is that when he's asked, how much do you know? Do you have any meat? Do you have anything to let me know how much you've learned? Is what he was asking the disciples uh, there at the, in the last chapter, I believe it is, of, of Luke. And so he he's come and he says he was hungered. When he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it. So he comes to every one of us. And here is the important thing, that if we have not came, in other words, sit and think about this. Uh, I know we've talked about this before. Sit and think about this as a fruit tree, okay, as a, what we're a little more familiar around here with, uh, even as if it's a fig or an apple tree or whatever. In other words, the blossom is just the beginning. It buds, it blossoms or blooms, and then it brings forth a fruit. You don't start with that fruit. It's it has to bud. And so he he proved things uh, of of who was right and wrong with God, and who was telling truth and who had power with God, such as Aaron. When Aaron laid up the uh, the uh, stick into the ark, it budded, blossomed, and brought forth almonds. And it was supposed to be a, a dry stick. Okay, so it budded, and uh, you know, and I think there's one place that uh, you know, the, don't let anyone say that you're a dry tree. You know, so this fig tree, when Christ comes to us. He's wanting to see what what fruit we're bearing, you know. Uh, it, it, and if we only come to the blossom stage, we've not got fruit yet. If we're just at the bud stage, we've not got any kind of fruit yet. So it must bud, blossom, bloom, in other words, and bring forth fruit or almonds. So and so he comes here looking, and he finds a fig tree. Uh, in the way he came and found nothing thereon. Because when he's looking at our lives, we should be having fruit set on. We should be learning and growing in the knowledge of the Lord. So he wants to know when he comes, just sit and think about it. when he comes to them old boys there after his crucifixion, came to him and said, have you any meat? And they said, you know, no, we don't have anything. Boy, it would have been a terrible time. You know, because they'd say, well, we, we have no knowledge of anything of what you've done for us. But they said, we have a, a broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he said, you know, he went on, goes on to say, this indeed, that is as of the Psalms and of Moses and the prophet concerning me, what they gave him in the spiritual sense, they understood the process up to the crucifixion and the things that he had told them, and they learned from it. And that was lodged there. They knew that meaning of it. And so he went on then to expound upon the scriptures concerning about him and his death and all of those things that was going to be thereafter, things that they needed to know now that they understood why he came and died on the cross. Now you need to proceed on further. So it's sort of like us being saved. We understand, you know, we're, we're, we're at a crossroads before we're saved, and we need to understand that it's Christ to be saved, and then after that, there's things that he wants us to do. And so then we're able to bring forth the knowledge and the truth and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So, and, but he said, but, but leaves only and said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently uh, the fig tree withered away. There's a space of time. There is a time that you look at in our lives. If we do not get saved and we do not bring forth that fruit, we're going to wither up and die. So then, then uh, we'll take a comment in a minute. But in Luke 13, uh, it's one I've preached on before. And... Uh, uh, let's 
6, 13 and 6. And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. So can we pray for one another? Sure, we should. That's our purpose. We, I, I would not want my enemies nor my friends or whoever, my family, to not come to the knowledge of Christ and bear fruit. Okay? So he's going to come to them and we see maybe them in our midst. We see people unsaved in our midst that are not, you know, bringing forth or anything. And, and so we ought to have concern for one another. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it to ground? Why is it taking up space? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also. And let me, he said, till I dig about it, let me preach, let me pray, let me sing, let me witness to this tree, okay, to this individual. He said, and dung it, give it the fertilizer it needs. Listen to what he said. And if it bear fruit, well, do all that you can do, okay, if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. So we ought to be concerned about our fellow man and so on. So back to Revelation on it. So when these, uh, as a fig tree, cast her untimely figs, it's not time for the ripen. And, and, you know, and so uh, I guess I look at this in one thing that uh, I don't have it wrote here, but I guess if I would write out from it, would be, he cometh in the hour that we think not. We think we got all kinds of time to bloom and blossom and, and bear fruit. You know, we even in our own lives, I mean the space of our own lives, we think we've got the time to that for it to bring forth that fig or that fruit that, that is needed. But when it hits the wind comes along, if the storms come in life and it's not got fruit. Sit and think about a you know peach tree blooms early, like now, and a lot of them probably will get killed by the frost, and they won't make it because they bloom in our area too early, and so the frost will bite them, and they won't bring forth the peach. They still got a bud. They still had a, a blossom, and some may make it, and some may not. But that is the. In other words, the harshness of that. And so at the coming of the Lord, we're looking at these things. When he comes back and so on, and he's called out everybody to be able to be saved. But if he comes and catches us unaware, we're called unaware. And so this wind, when all these events take place, uh, and, and, and this fig tree cast her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So, you know, we should be, we, you know, as of right now, let's pray, let's preach, let's witness, let's testify to our people that they need Jesus. Yeah, because time is running out. Because here's a time that when all these things is going to take place. Because we see here then, as we get on down in this, what those that waited too late, what's going to happen? They're going to run to the rocks and the mountains. He's not talking about, you know, running up here this little cave thing that's right here to, to hide us from the faith. He's talking about that, what we've trusted in. The governments, the doctrines, religion, and so on when we get down into that. So, and I'm saying that in order to look at this. So here's some events taking place that he's showing and warning us through this. This ought to be something that we preach and we teach and warn our people. These events, if you don't get it, those things cannot help you at the coming of the Lord. Once it's He's coming, it's over. I mean, it's fine. You can get in up to before the midnight hour. And then when the midnight hour strikes, it's it. Any comment? That's kind of why you should always be prepared. I mean, you've got to, you've got to be pre prepared for what's happening. The storms that yeah. come. 
you know, and the end that comes, and the coming of Christ. And then, like I was saying in, in Matthew that you that you were reading, it's, everything is done in stages, and that's what it seems like that's what God wants. You can't skip a step, so to speak. You have yeah. to kind of grow as as you're grown going yeah. through it. So, you know, he said on in in Luke there when he looked at the fig tree in the midst of the vineyard thing, and he said. Uh, why is this thing, you know, why does it cover up the grain? And sometimes religion, and I've preached this before out of this message or two, sometimes we stomp around that tree. I'm, you know, just think of it as the natural. If I go out there to my apple trees or my peach trees and I pack it down and I stomp it, then, then water's going to run off. It's not going to penetrate that grain. Sometimes we make the ground so hard, and spiritually now I'm speaking, that we make it so hard that the there's nothing you know that, that, that to get that tree to grow and perform the way it's supposed to perform, and sometimes even as we do that to young Christians, we 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 tank it down, we burden them down with so you got to do this, you got to do that, and if you're gonna be a good Christian, you got to work, you got to do this, and we put works above bearing the fruit. We think that to them, we're telling them that, that to bear that fruit is to do all these things. But to bear fruit is to tell about Jesus Christ. Have the witness and the testimony that you love God because God first loved you while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us and loved us. So then what he says on that, he tells them, he said, well, he, he prayed, he said, uh, uh, he, he said, uh, let it alone this year, praying and asking God till I dig about it, loosening the soil. You, you dig about it and loosen up the soil so the moisture can come in, so the, in other words, of the Spirit, so it can come in and work. And, you know, it's nothing that we will do. Let's tell about Jesus. It will tear up that ground. It will make it uh, penetrable. He will come and play around with the heart and say hey you need me you need me that's the job of the Holy Spirit and it brings us under conviction and it comes about and, and pricks the heart and telling us wooing us and so on and then he said then let me fertilize it let me once the interest is there let me tell them about Jesus and the goodness of God what God so loved the world for us for and he wanted to give his son that we could move from from death unto life because then we have love in God and he said we move from we know we've moved from death unto life because we love the brethren okay because we love one another and we want to see one another then bring forth the fruit but then there's a time God says enough's enough that's it <clears throat> They're going to be killed as they were killed. We're always talking about what happened before. Same thing is in our time. So if you look at, at at the verse should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. There's the fulfilling of everything and every time frame because the horsemen come through and he's showing us this is what happens when certain things take place. So when we see that great earthquake we, we look at that as a spiritual thing also. And if you go back, and let's remember uh, Adam and Eve. They tried to sew fig leaves together to hide their nakedness mm -hmm. from God. So just keep that in the back of your mind while I go through some of this. In Hebrew thir or 12 and, uh, and 25, because this is the thing. We cannot <coughs> refuse God that speaketh. He's the one that has the truth. See that ye, not, ye refused not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also the heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may re remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, 
Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for God is a consuming fire. So when we see this uh, earthquake come along in different times, we see that he shook, he cut down Nebuchadnezzar's tree, and it shook all the earth because they thought this this cannot happen. But when God determines something's going to happen because of what we turn away from the word of God, then that sun and that moon have no shining. And so if you go back into, uh, let's go back to Joel 2, because remember we started in Joel 1 when we were showing about the wheat. Who, whose word, what are we asking the price of? Uh, when we studied about the horsemen that come through. So in Joel 2 and 10, the earth shall uh, quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. So we see even back in Nebuchadnezzar, we talked about, he was going to show Nebuchadnezzar, the armies of heaven do rule. So when God brings that judgment at that time, the time has become so wicked that they will not heed the word of God. So we see that throughout the Bible. But now in this, he's showing us also, there's a lifetime. There's a time when, when everything is over. But, but this time he's showing this, that this happened to your brothers and sisters before they went through their times upon earth. So now he's showing us this same thing happened at that time. The sun and the moon, no shining. It was what what we get into is if we don't preach and teach the word in the right way, then people don't come out of their sins. And so when you see uh, the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, God sets forth a judgment. So let's go to Luke uh, 21 and 29 because when he shakes this, this tree, uh, it affects everything. It, it affected, when he cut down Nebuchadnezzar's tree, it affected all the other trees. It affected all the other nations, so to speak. And so when he does these things, it's going, it's all over there. It's an earthquake. It's earth shattering. It makes people, what, what is going on? We know something's going on. So, um, and he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, Know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. And verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. He's showing you always from the beginning to the end. If you do these certain things and these horsemen come through, it happened all these times. The same beliefs and doctrines to turn away from the, Lord, the word of God. And just because you say, oh, I'm of the fig tree, you can't sew those leaves together. God's going to see your nakedness. He's going, and you're going to be held accountable. So he's showing this same thing. When this mighty wind comes along, he's going to know what fruit you are on the tree. So let's go to Jeremiah 24. Because see, all this is the same things he's told everybody. Um... The Lord showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of the Lord. After that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive uh, Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah with the carpenters, with the smith from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs. He's going to know what you are in this tree. You're not going to hide what you really are. Just the same way in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, he knew the Daniel. He knew the other ones also. So this time, he's saying, I know you in what time that you're in. You can't.
cannot hide from me. We can hide from each other. But he showed Nebu or, uh, Jeremiah. There's two baskets of figs, Jeremiah. You can see one type of fig and you can see the other. Did not some of those that uh, the Babylonians had taken in captivity, they weren't godly, but some were. The Daniels of this world, you know what they went into that kingdom and done? They told them about the word of God. The naughty figs won't do that. They'll go along with whatever's going on in the custom or the religion or the beliefs, but not the good figs. The good figs stay just, well, they'll die as the brethren before them. We stay in that word of God, and that's how the old man is done away with, and we come alive in Christ Jesus. We don't let the world control us. So when we uh, go back into now Isaiah um, 13 and 10, because he, he's showing us this is the end of, of everybody in a sense, but it's, it's like Matthew 13, the end of this world, this world, and the end of the world. But he's showing us that this one also, are you just fulfilling like what your brethren already went through? It's nothing new. So Isaiah 13 and 10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. And therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger. So now we see... God has had anger in different times. When uh, they rose up, and I'll keep using Nebuchadnezzar, he said, the Holy One and watchers come down, but heavens knows what's up on this earth. And he cut that tree down. There was nobody could stop it. So he brought that. There was no shining. There was no more, I guess, time to have a repentance of, of sin. You, the the sin had reached unto heaven. So we go back to the days of Noah. What happened? The wrath of God. The anger of God. It, the earth was filled with violence through them, so something happened. We see in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, something happened. We're talking about time frame each other. So this in Revelation 6 is also so showing that we're going to go through what our brethren did because God had already showed the end from the beginning and we're just going to do the same things. People that without God, they stay in their sins and they do the same thing. These horsemen come through and when this one comes along, it follows after the one before it. We talked about that. There's a process of time and it's all the same things though. Anybody comment? Anybody? So you can see too, you can look at all those times that she was talking about Nebuchadnezzar, the time of Adam and Eve, you know, how they tried to hide themselves with the fig leaves and you you know, and God's looking and knows, you know, where as she was read there in Jeremiah said, so whether we are a good fig or a naughty fig, you know. You may claim that you're still of that fig tree. But God's going to do the rejecting. You know what I'm saying? He's the one. So we we may think everybody is what we say is good as gold, but God looks and says, "Well, you you're putrid." You know. So He knows, and so then, but we should learn from those things. It's sort of like that. You know, one time we did a we mentioned and studied pretty deeply, I think, into a thing that you could go back and look and see those things that came and Abel, what they've done, Lot's wife. All of those patriarchs of old, what the good things they done, but then also what about those things like Cain and Abel, what Lot's wife done, and you know many other ones came up and did things that were not right. But those those things we should have learned from, and you know, and we should even more know more 
now in our time. But sometimes I look and see, I believe we know very little. Mm -hmm. And we should have known those spiritual stories of Cain and Abel and of Noah and the ark and all of that. We should have, them things should have been taught to us. From the beginning. From the beginning. When we were young Christians, those things should have been taught to us and they were not. And so, but I'm still thankful to God to be able to come to know him. And there are still those that still do not have that understanding. But so, but relate it back to here. So we then should be able to learn from those things and take heed of those things uh, as, as she was talking about. And I looked and, and I mentioned part of that, but here it is in Luke 21 that she talked about that fig tree and so on. That in 2132, verily I said, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So you look at, he's going to, we're going to have to give the, you know, did you not know those things of, of the first time, the second time, third, and now? Should you have not gained those things? And we should. At least some of them to be able to escape the wrath of God. This quaking and stuff that, that, that's going on that, we're going to have to, as she said and puts it in the thing, that we're going to have to suffer the some of the same things, but we're able to go through it. L listen to what he said. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that so that they come upon you unawares. We should know that what the things that's happening in this world right now, and I, what I've always said, there is no new thing under the sun. Book of Ecclesiastes said, and I believe it. We can look and see all the fandangled and new ideas that people come up with, and we can say we've done this, and I hate to use some of the terms that the world uses, and I'm not going to, but, and I know I do to every once in a while, but all the things they come up with, oh, it's new. No, it's not. It's just an old sin that they went back to from the beginning, and picked it up and renamed it, but it's still the same scene. Just the same old thing. <clears throat> and so, you know, look, look what he said. So he could, for, for as a snare shall it come upon all them. He don't leave nobody out from beginning to end. All them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Everybody. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape how can we escape? We don't, as it goes on down in, in these verses, we don't have to worry. I don't have to run to religion, denomination, to doctrine, government, great men of this earth. I don't have to run to them and say, you promised me. You all, made, you, know, you all said you would take care of me. And when it comes down to the end of life and all these things, who's going to be there to, as we preach Sunday, help you over Jordan? How, so we need, because of the battle, we not only need how, know, know how to need to cross that for the battles that lie between here and heaven and the things that we have to uh, ward off and fight off and have the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty to the pulling down the stronghold. But we don't have to worry and say, you know, all of these, like the great men of this earth and the captains and all, and we sit and think, boy, they, they're, they're going to buy their way out. They're, going to, they're just going to be so good that they're not going to have to go to hell. But the Word of God strikes that right real quick and says there's nothing good. The only way that anybody ever has will now or ever get into heaven is by Jesus Christ. Yes, and if we do not have him, and if those that died that did not have him, they had opportunity to have the word, and if they do not have it, they're not there, and they're not going to be there. They run to the same rocks and mountains as that we're going to when the shaking comes. And we're not going to bring fruit to fruition. It's not going to take place. So it be, be counted worthy. How can we be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man? How are we going to be counted worthy to escape these things? And you and I, we don't have to worry about it because we're, we're learning and we're growing and knowing 
look, the way that we're escaping these things and to avoid the wrath of God because the wrath of God abideth upon the children of the disobedient. And as I've said for years, over and over in preaching from time to time, is that no matter whether you live excuse me, or die, you're the Lord's. Whether you believe in him or not, God's still God. And that's it. Now, and you, you can die and say, I don't believe in God. You can die and say, I don't need Jesus Christ. I've got somebody else is going to help me get in because that's the way I was raised and that's my country. That's the way that uh, of my tradition and the way I'm going to go. Nevertheless, it does not matter. You must have Jesus Christ and him believe him crucified. You believe that he is the only begotten son of God. That's the only way you can overcome the world. So if when all this shaking, in other words, she said, so they should be killed as they should uh, should be fulfilled. So we've got to die. We've got to die out to sin. And if not, we're going to die in sin. We're still going to abide there. And the death's going to come. And after, after death, the judgment and death and hell comes. Death comes and hell follows. And it's going to be cast into the lake of fire. So how do we escape? And he tells us, how shall we escape in the book of Hebrews? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? There's no escape in the wrath of God. Without Jesus Christ, that's the only way you can escape the wrath of God. I think also uh, when we see that the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a big tree cast of her untimely beast, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. So these stars of heaven fell into the earth because God let something come up on them. And it shakes, just as I always say, when the truth come along and it was revealed that, and you know, Satan fell as lightning. Uh, he fell from his place or that star of wormwood or all those things that we'll read later on if you go through Revelation. When the truth comes along, this doesn't, because sh- we're in the truth, it doesn't shake us all these days. He said, be not soon shaken or fear, and I think it's Thessalonians maybe, I don't remember right now, because these things must come to pass. There must come this great falling away. This is this falling away. They trusted in something else, even though they were saying, I'm of the fig tree, but they're untimely figs. And when she is shaken of a mighty wind, God lets that mighty wind go through the land. And if you go into Daniel uh, 7, he shows you the four winds, which are a mighty wind upon the earth. He shows you what happens. He'll go also in Revelation. And he'll say, until the seal of all those that are godly, they hold back the winds. But then it'll come forth. You know, at the time when he's going to shake the heavens and the earth. So uh, Daniel uh, 7 and 2, and Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea, and the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. So he's showing you that the wind, there's a wind from God that he will bring, but there's also these, uh, every wind and wave of doctrine that happens. So we must see we must see light and we must see darkness and that's what he's showing you here. When you think that you're trusting in somebody's word that's not truly the word of God and you say, oh, I'm in the church. I'm in I'm in this fig tree, so to speak. I'm okay. God comes along and boy, he's going to shake this earth. He gets people to show us where we're actually at. And a lot of times, by at this time though, there is a moment that becomes too late. Remember, the door to the ark Close. is shut yeah. by God. Yeah. No man can ever shut this way and say it's over. Yeah. But God shut the door, and we know who the door into safety is. It's always Christ. And so we see this, and... Casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. 
So there's things happening, and we see it now. Um, we I, I talk about it in Daniel 12. We talk about this great awakening right now. I always tell people, God knew what woke <coughs> was way before we ever come up with the term. Do we awake unto righteousness, or do we wake unto unrighteousness? These figs were in unrighteousness. So the same way as the basket that Jeremiah saw. Jeremiah didn't come up with this. God was saying, the Lord showed Jeremiah what types of figs. And so we know those outside of the church, they're not proclaiming that they're a part or anything. But this is, this is showing that there's a separation because we have to see all, all of the earth, all the people. And so when we see this untimely figs, it's not that they, they haven't come to anything. They're okay. not, they're not, they're not in the sense of, of understanding or doing what God has said. And so we see this black as the sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. What is that telling us? So we must always keep in mind 1 Corinthians 11 because God over Jesus, Jesus over man, and man over the woman. The man that has Christ as his covering, preaching to the church about Christ, then she's covered, and her hair is a glory, and she's looking at the blood of Christ. They're not returning back to their own ways, their own blood, their own salvation uh, of what they think. Our, all nations must come of that one blood, which is Christ. But sometimes we trust in something else. Mm -hmm. And when the great shaking comes along, we find out, hey, we weren't really a part of it. Yeah. And she mentioned there that Paul was telling the church of Thessalonica, <coughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, it's one that people preach about, you know, of all this and when, when Satan's going to come along and so on like that. Uh, but uh, most, uh, mostly we don't really understand who Satan is, but now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, okay, that you be not soon shaken in mind, let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. And if we're thinking his way, he's leading us by the Spirit. And I was sitting and thinking about that uh, figs and so on like that, and that, uh, you know, we wouldn't have very much confidence like Apostle Paul said, uh, he said, I'm persuaded, you know, that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, okay? So, you know, when, when all this shaking comes and here at the end that we look back and see they went through their shaking in those times before, as you mentioned, Nebuchadnezzar and all them. So when, when those storms came and winds came and judgment came, that's what was happening, judgment came. Okay, judgment fell in the time of Noah, and those people were outside of the ark, and they all perished. So uh, he's he knows us, and he's waiting upon us for the precious fruit of the earth. He's waiting, and he's not going to grab, shake one tree, and grab one, and curse one tree uh, that he knows that hey where it's going to or not. And he's not going to let one say, well, if you'd have just let me, you know, on it, I, I would have, I would have been, I would have ripened up and I wouldn't have failed. It would have, it'd have been timely. God knows it all. God's just, holy, true, and so on. But he said, don't be as, as sh shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit. There's a whole lot of people can tell you a whole lot of things and dance around about a whole lot of things. But you ought to know what the Spirit of God, what is truth. Okay? By the Spirit, nor by word. Which word? It's got to be of Christ. Nor by letter as from us, as that, the, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. When we realize who the son of perdition is. Okay, he waits on us of that precious fruit. 
and he waits up to know what is right and wrong, truth, and and so on. And it's up to us to come, you know, on it because he is doing his part by the Holy Spirit, wooing us and telling us and leading us and guiding us if we will only be led. And he said, as many be led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So when he leads us, guides us, and directs us, then we'll know. We'll know the right word. It'll be some, my word or nobody else's. It'll be the word of God. It'll be Christ. It'll not be by a letter, by some doctrine or something, the creed and so on like that somebody has wrote that we must believe in because we've already got what we need to believe to be able to get to heaven. There is also, this is time, everything in the Bible shows time and remember Paul said as one born out of due time I mean we, and there's a great message in that uh, we should have already known a lot of these things Paul was like I should have knew some of this uh, so we see that so let's go to uh, Luke uh, 19 and let's say 42 okay um, if thou hadst known even thou at least in this thy day and remember everybody's got a day or a time because that day of Christ is in all the days upon the of the earth so this day that Christ has fulfilled is in every day all the days of the earth at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace but now they are hid from thy eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, can pass thee round and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. And this is the reason, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Did not God say, I have visited the earth? Did he not visit in the garden? Adam, where art thou? And we have to give an answer. Where are we at? And then you look at, he visited Abraham. He visited Mary. He visited us. Each of us has had a visitation, one way or the other. Now for us, you know what? We invited him in. We wanted him. He knocked and we opened the door. And we said, come in. And yet these, thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. That's what Paul was saying. Why didn't I come to understand? And yet so thankful he did. And that's what they're going to say. You did not know the time of the visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought. There's your buying and your selling, doing the spirit in a different way saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy them. You want to see two different types of figs right there? There they are. Yeah. And, yeah. So when we see this, if the Lord has visited, why do we not believe him? Why do we not believe the truth that comes? It's not hid. We know it's Jesus Christ and him crucified, but they didn't know the time of their visitation, some of them did. So I always go back, and it's throughout different places in the Word of God. If you look at how they come and visit, and all the stories in the Old Testament are talking about a visitation, if you look at them that way, who's come to your house? Who's come to tell you the truth? Who's come to give you encouragement? Who's come to help you along the way? And sometimes to help a person means you got to tell them some hard things. And sometimes they may not want to receive that, but I'd rather have to tell a person something hard and get them to see that, hey, I'm trying to pull your feet out of the fire because surely what's coming, I think it's in Isaiah 2, they knew what was behind them was the wilderness, but in front of them was the Garden of Eden. Sometimes I want to say, in front of you, there's something that's going to be, 
And for some, you look at what their their expectation is. It's death, hell, and the grave. And if you can get them to see death, I mean truly see death, we don't like to talk about that, and truly see darkness, and truly see to be an eternity without God. And you know what? It ought to shake them. Yeah. It shakes me. Yeah. That kind of shaking brings to salvation. But the other shaking is too late. The mighty winds is going to come. And the rains is going to fall. And great is the fall of that house. When we're not rooted in ground. All right. We'll stop right there. Uh, on the... Verse 13, we'll pick up Lord's Will and 14 and some of them, but it's, uh, it's almost 7.30. So uh, we'll stop there and uh, 